Coming up on American Medicine Today, imminent scientific advancements will soon turn 90 into the new 40. Dr. Michael Royson joins us to discuss how plasma transfers may be the key to a younger tomorrow. Then Diane tells us how a pinched nerve nearly put an end to her career. After witnessing her own daughter's success with the Bonatti spine procedures, Diane made the call and is now happy to be back at work pain-free. Finally, with elections on the horizon, many worry about the possibilities of voter fraud. Chairman of the Hillsborough County Republican Party and retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Jim Warshuk joins Dr. Bonatti to discuss the issue. How can we ensure more secure voting? Find out coming up on American Medicine Today. Featuring cutting edge science and medical innovation, touching personal stories of recovery from pain, along with political, social, and healthcare issues plaguing our nation. This is American Medicine Today, brought to you by the Bonatti Spine Institute and Alfred Bonatti, MD. Welcome to American Medicine Today. I'm Kimberly Bonatti alongside Ethan Euchre and world-renowned orthopedic surgeon, Dr. Alfred Bonatti. New scientific advancements in aging are claiming that in the very near future, living to 90 will be the new 40. Joining us to discuss is Dr. Michael Royzen, Emeritus Chief Wellness Officer at the Cleveland Clinic and New York Times bestselling author of The Great Age Reboot, Cracking the Longevity Code for a Younger Tomorrow. We also have co-author of that same book, Albert Ratner. Thank you for both joining us on the program. Thank you. Thank you. You say in the very near future that we're going to be living to ages like 120, possibly even 130. So why don't you talk about that? Well, since 1890, life expectancy in the United States has gone up in a relatively straight line fashion from an average age of 41 to now 78 or 79, about two and a half years every 10 years. But in the next decade, we expect it to expand by 30 years because of the 14 areas of research into the mechanism of aging. All of these have shown in at least two animal species the ability to reboot the animal younger. So we said when real age came out in 1998 that 60 was likely to be the new 40. It's come to pass by slowing the rate of aging. But this is actually rebooting. And so with an 80% probability, we think at age 90, you'll be able to function like the 40 year old of today. How are we doing that though? Are we doing that by like rubbing creams on ourselves <laughs> or taking a pill or getting a shot? shot? <laughs> how how well, do we it, keep it, from aging? It, it can be all of those. So let me give you an example. In, 19, in the 1960s, the convoys who were at San Francisco, UC San Francisco, University of California, gave young blood of a rat to an old rat, and the old rat became young. It was thought it was something in the blood, and they worked on that for 50 years. But now what's turned out is that if you take away the old plasma and old proteins of the old rat, that itself helps the rat regenerate younger proteins, younger blood, and become younger. That's now progressed to what we call the AMBAR studies. The AMBAR studies are randomized controlled trials, about 300 people who had early dementia. And what they found by doing a plasma exchange, donating their plasma once a week for five weeks and then once a month for the next four months, they reversed every aspect of cognitive dysfunction they had. That has led to the point where we're now doing a randomized control trial, the AMBAR group is, in 3,000 patients instead of in six sites and 100 sites to see if it's replicable. Not only did, in fact, their brains get younger, but in the animal experiments, the skin got younger, the muscles got younger, the cardiovascular system functioned younger, and biopsies of their kidney, their liver, and their pancreas all looked like younger animals. So all 14 areas have progressed in animal studies to be able to reboot them back and they're moving into human trials now, like the AMBAR plasma exchanges. When you talk about in your book about an action plan that people can take today 
To prepare for the changes of tomorrow, why don't you elaborate on that? Well, it's we think that sometime around 2050 or maybe thereafter, you'll go in at one end of the car wash as a 90-year-old and you'll come out a 40-year-old at the other end. <laughs> but in the meantime, it's going to be organ by organ. Hmm. So you want to keep your joints as young. You want to keep your cardiovascular system as young as possible. You want to keep each of your systems as young as possible so that you can benefit by the reboot if it's only one organ at a time. And so there's a, an action plan that, that is simple things. The most important one is what Albert says is do things you love. That is, if you have friends, nurture them. If you don't like walking. So I always tell him to walk 10,000 steps a day for preventing chronic disease, even for preventing dementia has been shown. But if you don't like walking, he hates walking. So, but he loves playing with his grandchildren on the floor. He loves, if you will, ping pong. Is that right? You got it. So he always says, do what you love. And loves you back. And that yeah. loves you back. So you food is also a relationship. You wouldn't marry someone who is trying to kill you. You shouldn't eat food that's trying to kill you every day. <laughs> you may love red meat, but it's trying to kill you. Mm -hmm. So the goal is to find salmon or avocado, things I love that love me back. And that's true in each of the fields. So major six fields, if you will. Um, one is uh, that we've got a plan for in each of those. One is stress and stress management, mm. nutrition, food choices, portion size and time you eat and when you eat. Um, the next one is physical activity. Then it is avoiding unforced errors like texting while driving or uh, living in an area with, with bad air pollution. Uh, the fifth one is keeping sleep and brain health. And there are 33 things that have been shown in at least two studies to help your brain that we, we go through. And then the sixth one is, is a few supplements and small molecules um, that have been shown to be a benefit uh, to people aging. And what are those? Well, they're actually, you know, on our website at greatagereboot.com. So it's the same title as the book, greatagereboot.com. We have a Reboot Your Age program, and but we also have a place people can ask questions. And so they've sent in over 50 supplements. The Scientific Advisory Board has reviewed those and their, their reviews in the app on that. But about 16 of them have real data. One of the ones that we were surprised about was phosphocreatine. Hmm. It's a bodybuilding supplement for young people. That is from 15 to 35. They use it to build muscle. And try and look like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Some football players, even on the Tampa Bay Bucks, use it. Mm -hmm. But sure. in fact, if you look at people with aging, they've used it in 70 year olds and above, and they retain muscle mass so they don't develop frailty. They were looking in these randomized controlled studies at brain function because they didn't want a side effect. Well, it actually improved brain function. So it's a simple thing. It's about $40 for a four month supply, $10 a month at most. Mm -hmm. And uh, it it actually helps functioning. So there are about 16 of those that we were surprised. And everyone on the scientific advisory board, the, the 10 of us on the scientific advisory board who are all, quote, experts in longevity, all have changed their behavior as we reviewed the science. Do you wash the plasma and you beat it back or how do you do it? So in, the, in the plasma exchange studies in the animals, they give the red cells back after washing it. Um, and the rest of the plasma, they just replace with saline. That's also in one of the four groups that was effective in the AMBAR studies. They took out a unit of blood, they gave the red cells back after washing it, and they gave salt water back, saline back. Um, for uh, some of the other studies, they actually gave washed albumin back, but it, it, the, the group that got the salt water back had just as great a benefit. The, the interesting thing about that, uh, doctor, is that, in fact, the cost of that, we normally pay kids to donate plasma. So it's not very expensive, right? You pay graduate students mm -hmm. to, to donate. So it's not very expensive, but it is apparently, at least in the, the animal studies and this first of the human studies, very effective. But you are removing a lot of electrolytes and a lot of things on the plasma. How you replace that with just with saline? 
uh, it's only one unit at a time. So it's one unit at a time, but it's just with saline and the body regenerates. That's the, the key is the body regenerates the plasma and what's in it. How many times you do that one in measure in a month? It, they did it once a week for five weeks and then once a month for the next four months. So nine times over five months in the AMBAR studies. Wow, right. I wish I wish we truly had more time with you. We'll have to invite both yourself, Dr. Michael Roizen, and co-author Albert Ratner of The Great Age Reboot, Cracking the Longevity Code for a Younger Tomorrow. Thanks for being on the program. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you stay tuned. Coming up after the break, a story of recovery. Don't be screwed by lesser spine institutes who bait you with minimally invasive procedures, then switch to screws, rods, disc replacements, and hardware. At Bonatti, no metal hardware fusions are ever used. Bonatti invented the precise tools necessary to minimize surgery, scarring, anesthesia, and recovery. So successful are the Bonatti spine procedures, they consistently reflect 98.75% patient satisfaction. Over half our patients have suffered from failed back and neck surgeries at other facilities. Bonatti succeeds where others fail. Diane Morgan is a wife, mother of two, and business owner. I am a dance instructor. I've danced since I was three years old. I was in a ballet company when I was older, started also teaching for them. They closed their business and I opened this business here. I've been here for 16 years. I love to teach. Um, I love the kids. It's, it's my whole life. It's, I love it very much. My daughters dance, I dance, so it's a family tradition. We actually are a very active family. Um, my husband, David, we met in high school and we were always active, working out, um, bicycle riding, everything together. Um, and then when the kids came along, they just joined right in, working out with us, coming to dance class and being physical. I have two daughters, um, Brittany. She is a professional dancer now. She's out on a cruise ship dancing. And my younger daughter, Megan, and she's also a dancer here at the studio. She built a career around her love of dance and passion for teaching dance to others. The excitement, the passion, the release that it gives me, um, just that feeling of being able to move your body to music and feel the music and express your emotion. In November 2015, an unfamiliar pain began to interrupt her daily routine. I thought maybe it was a pulled muscle because, you know, I teach four days a week, like four or five hours a day, so I thought I had pulled a muscle. Um, iced it, heating pad, icy hot, took hot baths, you know, all those things to try to relieve the pain. I was unable to do so after I would say maybe about six weeks, um, I went to my primary physician. Upon visiting her primary care physician, she was given medications and recommended to complete six weeks of physical therapy. My doctor had me on an anti-inflammatory and also a muscle relaxer, which was doing nothing, no relief. During physical therapy, her pain only escalated. Trying to get up out of bed and only being able to take a couple steps was the scariest thing I've ever been through. Not only not being able to walk, but thinking that I'm not able to go to the studio, I'm not able to teach my students, I'm not able to dance. Um, was very scary for me. <laughs> While I was doing PT, yes, the pain was getting worse. I didn't have any relief at all, and I knew that, th that something serious was wrong. My daughter, Brittany, had had procedures before and had had the nerve trapped, and from what she had told me, that was what I suspected was wrong with me. Having already seen the amazing results the Bonatti Spine Procedures provided her daughter, Diane made the call. I knew what they did for Brittany. I knew that she was able to go out and dance and live her life, live her dream. And that was the first phone call that I made. I knew that they could help me. And I told them what I was feeling. They got me in that day. 
My husband drove me there. We got into the office. It was the Christmas holiday, so <laughs> I didn't even know if they were open or they would be able to help me whatsoever during that time. But they got me in, they did an MRI for me and explained to me um, that the nerves were trapped in L4, 5 and L3, 4 and that they you know, what they recommended and where I was having pain and that I needed a procedure. Diane's first procedure was in January 2016. I went in, had the pre-op done. Um, my daughter, Brittany, actually was able to be here with me for the procedure, so she went in with me for the procedure. I was awake during the procedure, um, which was amazing because they have the television screen and everything and you can actually watch and see what's going on. So I watched and it was amazing how they were able to manipulate the nerve and correct the pain. Bonatti's targeted precision spine procedures utilize conscious IV sedation, allowing the patient to remain awake, alert, and in constant communication with the surgeon. After the first procedure, I felt instant relief. I mean, it was amazing. I had the procedure done on Tuesday and I was back teaching the following Monday. So it was a matter of a week. It was instant relief. I felt wonderful. I was able to walk, I was able to teach, I was able to go back to normal activities. I had the second one a month after. Um, and at that time my daughter wasn't here, so my husband got to go in surgery with me and it, he found it very interesting too. He was able to watch it. He couldn't believe that I was awake and, and speaking to him and, and to the doctor and everything. And I had that done, like I said, a month after the original procedure. Um, same, same day, I had it done on a Tuesday and I was back in classes on a Monday. Um, I think the procedure went great. I feel really good. I don't have the pain anymore shooting down the front of my leg, so it feels really good. Yeah, I'm very happy, very pleased. Since receiving the exclusive patented Bonatti Spine Procedures, Diane has regained her strength and is now back in motion teaching classes in the dance studio. It's been great. Um, I've been building up my leg again. My leg got a little bit weak. So I've been, you know, dancing and teaching and building up my muscles in my leg, and I don't think I'm going to need to go back, no. Diane offers a word of advice for anyone wondering if the Bonatti Spine procedures are right for them. Go to the Bonatti Spine Institute and have them do an MRI or bring your MRI results and listen to what Dr. Bonatti has to say or his other physicians have to say. They know exactly what's wrong. They know exactly where the pain is. And I had every confidence in him, even the first time I went with Brittany, you know, before, way before my proce procedures, I had total confidence in him. He knew exactly where the pain was. He knew exactly what needed to be done. There was just a total trust right off the bat. There was no questioning. My daughter and I looked at each other and said, this is it. This is, this is your solution. We totally believed in him and trusted him. Um, the Institute was wonderful, from Dr. Bonatti to the person who checked us in. It was just a wonderful experience. Bonatti was the one that helped me completely. Thank you for giving my career back to me. Several people have asked me, what did you do? Where did you go? Who did you see? And I'm more than happy to tell them that the Bonatti Spine Institute is the place to go. The good news this time is it was not open back surgery. They did give me my life back. This car is this big. He was a doctor that didn't want to fillet my back open like a fish. During the whole operation, I was awake. I was talking to the doctor. He's not really cutting muscles. He's just pushing them away. Immediately after the procedure, I was able to stand straight again and I had zero pain. Well, he did the surgery on the left side, and a week later, I was back in the gym. When somebody can help you to where you can recover and where you can do the things that you were able to do before, you just become thankful. I can't thank the Bonatti Institute enough for giving me my life back. It just opens up doors that you thought were closed. I love you, Doc. <laughs> Welcome back to American Medicine Today. 
Now, with so much insanity going on in this country, we decided to have a State of the Nation discussion today. So joining us here in studio to give his incredible insights as to what in the world's happening is retired U.S. Air Force Colonel Jim Warshuk, chairman of the Hillsborough County, Florida Republican Party and former White House National Security Council staffer. Doc, you and he were both talking about um, just the the rampant fraud in voting and what is the Hillsborough County Republican Party doing to to kind of uh, shed a spotlight on that and prevent that from happening again? We decided to put together a very robust election integrity team and we put together a team uh, consists of about 30 people mm -hmm. and that team uh, has analysts as people who know how to work with numbers, as well as people who understand the law. And that's the first and foremost thing. You have to understand the law. I believe very strongly that we always said we do not have solutions. We do have solutions. But to have solutions, we need to have people behind that is going to be as aggressive, as strong, and responsible. If anyone can grab anybody of the representatives or helpers of Donald Trump and put them in jail, what is happening with right now people that we know commit fraud in the government, we know they are irresponsible, and we know they are committing crimes. And none of these people is responsible. Meanwhile, we don't make people responsible. We will continue with this charade and we will continue asking that we need to wait for the next vote. The next vote is the next fraud. So are we going to wait for the fraud? Florida has some pretty stringent uh, laws on the books with regard to voter fraud and how we conduct our elections. And immediately after the 2020 election, uh, I was sitting at our annual uh, Republican Party of Florida meeting, and we were doing a uh, after action review of the election. And I told our, our state party chairman, one of the things you need to do is we need to do a recount, a full forensic recount and a full forensic audit, mainly for the purpose of making sure the voters felt confident. If we go back and do a recount, and we go back and do a full-blown audit, forensic audit, that is, is called, mm -hmm. the voters would be confident. It would also send a message to the other states where there was rampant voter fraud that, wow, look at Florida. Their election went really well, but they mm -hmm. still went back and did that. Transparency. Transparency. Yes. Now, over the course of the next two years, Governor Sanders signed two bills. One was Senate Bill 90 and Senate Bill 524, which basically tightened the law even more on Florida. No more drop boxes. They, they can only be secure boxes inside voter facilities where people can drop theirs, their, their ballot in, their, mm -hmm. their absentee or their early voting ballot. The legislation that was turned into law was pretty strict. So in Hillsborough, we said, well, we're, not, we're, we're gonna accept that, but we're gonna build this team that's gonna be available during elections from the day of early elections, and I, I disagree. I don't think we should have early elections. I don't think I think we should do like most other countries do: same day elections, yes, paper ballot. You know, if you want to dip your thumb in purple ink, that's the way to go. <laughs> yeah. But during this election, during the primaries, we had a lot of people out there. We were watching. We were even following the vehicles that carried the ballots from the election sites, the polling sites all the way to the supervisor of election headquarters where they would be where they would be counted. And we also notified the super of election every time throughout the last two years, every time we found a problem, mm -hmm. we instructed him to correct it. And oh, by the way, we're going to let the governor and the secretary of state know when you're doing something wrong. Uh, well, what, we found enough what, wrong where right now there's two lawsuits against the supervisor of election. What, what's the name of that? The, man, the, the gentleman's name is Craig Latimer. Craig Latimer is a career civil servant. He was a police officer and police detective and retired from that and then ran in 2012 to be the supervisor of election in Hillsborough County. Needs to be responsible. Yeah, we're holding him accountable mm -hmm. and yeah. he knows it. And that's 
those are the tools and the ability I as mm -hmm. a chairman in the county can do, mm -hmm. but I had to build that mechanism and put together that apparatus to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. It's really the only county in the state that's doing that. Why is that? If, if it's something that can work and it will rid um, our elections of fraud and keep things on the straight and narrow, why wouldn't more counties join you? Well, I think some of the I think some of the counties, uh, you know, this is the Republican Party doing sure. this. The governor enacted and and the legislature put in tougher laws on the books. Mm -hmm. uh, the governor also created what was called the election crime unit, mm -hmm. and they're anticipating that unit to be doing that. Now the governor uh, has uh, had twenty people elect, uh, arrested recently for election fraud, and they'll mm -hmm. be going to trial and. Well, and he said, there's more coming. Huh. That's the state level doing it. But I took it upon ourselves in Hillsborough County, and they stood up and they said, we'll do this. So that's what, what they're doing, and they've done a phenomenal job. Right. Do I need more? Yeah, I need more people. Do the other counties need it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, some counties are pretty red counties, you know, and there's not. But when you get to bigger counties like Dade County, Broward County, mm -hmm. Duval County, Orange County, there's there's more likely going to be election fraud there, mm -hmm. um, but we have to we have to do whatever we can to stop it. And my my uh, mission is to hold our supervisor of election in Hillsborough County accountable. And the man doesn't like me, and he knows when I'm around this building. <laughs> they don't need to like you; they just need to do. They just right. need to know that I'm I'm watching, and that's what I'm doing. I I would like that you use his name every time that you call the supervisor, because the the people need to know that name. Yes. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I will do that. What do you think about all these illegals that are bombarding places like New York, California, D.C., and they're all crying a foul because they're ruining their areas, but it was their idea to bring them in the first that place. Was, that, well, that, that, that whole thing is to bring in new people to be give, give them the vote. opportunity to vote. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. There's, they don't care about the degradation and, and, and the consequences of doing that. Mm-hmm. And but now they're crying them. about it. Now that they had to deal with the results of what happened, now they, they want them gone. I think it's the greatest thing that they're busing them, <laughs> that Governor Abbott is just busing them like, hey, go to Washington, D.C. Let's drop some off in Live uh, New it. York City. Yeah. Let's drop some off in Chicago. And now all the Democratic mayors are like, wow, well, we didn't want them. But you said you, you have did. to expose them. And As this fraud. is one way to expose them. Completely. Yeah, we need to do the same thing here in Florida. Absolutely. Absolutely. And yeah. we are. And I we think. Are. Thank you so much for sharing your time with us. Retired Air Force Colonel Jim Warshuk, Chairman of the Hillsborough County, Florida Republican Party and former White House National Security Council staffer. Thank you for joining us and talking about the debacle we know as the Biden regime. Make sure you check us out next Saturday, 4 p.m. Eastern on Newsmax. If you have any comments or questions, contact us at the number below. You can tweet at Dr. Benati using hashtag American Medicine Today or hashtag AMT. We would like to hear from you.